go. Okay, uh, we're going to show you the process for, uh, for loading the processor here. This is my primary tank or uh, my uh, staging tank, I guess you want to call it. I really don't know what kind of a tank that it is, but uh, it's 25 gallon mark and up here I would say is about another 4 gallons. So right at the top it's probably about 30 gallons. Um, in here it fits just perfectly uh, a drain pan and then in, in here I've got some screen and an old oscillating fan head that works really good for keeping the screen off the bottom. Uh, in the drain pan it's got a, a hole in it. Uh, this staging tank has two drains and again I made a stand pipe that goes off the uh, line that goes into the pump, pump number one, and then the processor. And then I also have a complete drain. Uh, what I like to do, and then this is a homemade, a homemade stand. Uh, what I like to do is, is fill this maybe a day before. Um, if the oil is clean, it really doesn't matter. But if there's, if there is sediment, it's going to go down here and sink below the standpipe, and then I can drain that mess out, you know, at a later time. Uh, and I have put a Tupperware underneath it here, just in case it does rupture. Uh, I can catch a lot of what would make a huge mess. So I'm just going to go through here, and as I talk, I can go ahead and start dumping some product in. I got a real clean sample right here. Uh, don't know where it came from, but you know it's almost brand new looking. And as I, as I pour this product in, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the stream, and if I see some, I call it cream, you know, just shortening or, or water that's in the bottom, I'll usually stop pouring. This sample was possibly unused oil. It looked like it could have been, and there was absolutely no uh, byproduct in it at all, so. No, it was used. It was just real good shape. Um, we'll keep dumping this product in. And then we've got a, uh, almost the opposite product here. <laughs> really dark. You can see that uh, there was some, it looks like cornmeal, burnt product in here. Uh, just keeping this product out. It's, it's really not a, a pristine process. You know, we try to keep it as clean as possible. Uh, putting cardboard on the floor, newspapers, uh, is, is really helpful for this. We'll make sure that that still will, yeah. I usually always watch this just in case I see some stuff, so I'm going to pull that out. I don't know if you can get down into the container there, but you can see kind of, I don't know if that's possible or not, but, okay. So, when I, when I get down to the dregs, you know, the, the, crud at the bottom. Uh, there's still good oil in here, it's just contaminated with, with junk. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll start a, a settling bucket. Um, you know, I've got some, some product over there, but uh, I'll just leave one of these here and then as I, uh, as I empty these containers, I'll go ahead and I'll pour the last bit back into this vessel. And then from there on, we'll use, actually we'll probably use this one. This one's got some some crud at the bottom, some shortening. So I'm gonna try to pour the good oil off the top. This looks like a settling bucket that I've used for that purpose in the past. So this is one I'll have to be pretty careful on and try not to. You can see how nice it looks there at the top. Those are just miles on the highway right there. <laughs> Oh, there we go. So I uh, got a little shot in there. Uh, you know, I would probably, you know, continue to make this my settling bucket. As long as I can keep pouring it off, and then eventually at some point this, this will be a waste. And then these containers I can reuse for collecting oil at the facility. You will typically need, you 
know, you got 25 gallon here. The standpipe goes up to about five. So you're going to want to try to fill this pretty much all the way to the top. So when the standpipe sucks air, you have a full 25 gallon of uh, waste oil, you know, to process. So these hold approximately four and a half gallon. If you want to round that to five, you know, you would need at least five of these, but plan on six or seven, carrying six or seven in at a time if you're doing 25 gallon because, you know, of the, of the waste at the bottom and the fact that these don't hold a full five gallons. And you know, there is, there are probably ways to automate this process if, if you, uh, you know, if you had a container that you could uh, drain off of and you could measure the amount of product, it just seems like I like to do things the hard way most of the time. I guess it gives me exercise among the hobby and the cheaper fuel. So, you know, there are, there are many different ways to do this. Again, this is, this is the way that I've chose to do this. But uh, you could go larger scale, smaller scale, you know, you, you, of course, you know, most mechanics will look at a process and say, oh, I can, I can have a better way of doing that and modify it, of course, that's the way it's done, but there's nothing wrong with that at all. You know, I would, I would certainly encourage that too, you know, but uh, for now this works for me. So you can see it's between 15 and 20 or so. Hopefully I'll be able to get the rest of these containers in here. As long as we get all the big stuff and no water. You know, water is really not a good thing. It's, you'll make a lot of soap the more water you have in here. Um, you know, I may have mentioned earlier that uh, the, this oil that I'm currently pouring in is oil that I've collected last year. I have some oil that I've been collecting this year. The reason is time and gravity are a great filter. And as you can see from the looks of the bottom of this container, that's, uh, that's about a year of settling. And as this product comes out in the end, it's got a lot less volume in here once you get down to that point where you don't have any you know good product in there anymore so there's really not a hell of a lot in there that isn't usable or that is usable rather okay we're getting down there I got one more container I always pull them out of here so I can you know kind of see what I'm what I'm working with and so I can see when you know, the junk starts to come out. Once I get this in here, I'll have, you know, a little bit over 25 gallon in the container. But again, I'd like a little more than that. So we would probably get another container and make sure that this is up above now about 28, 29 gallon or so. I think the standpipe leaves about five gallon in there. But we're above 25 and, you know, it has a 25 gallon capacity. Um, you know, this unit would probably circulate more, but with the rate of the pump and everything, you know, the 25 gallons is about, about the right amount. Um, what I think I can do is I can just document how many gallons was in here. We're looking at about probably 27 gallons or so. I'm going to go ahead and suck this in for you right now. So we've got pump number one. Um, underneath again I've got two valves. I've got a complete drain and i got the standpipe. I'm going to open up the standpipe first. And I'll open the primary tank to the line. I don't know if that'll come through. Is it coming through pretty good? I think so. Okay. I think so we got the primary line coming in, and then I've got on my intake manifold, I've got um, you know a ball valve, one of about 25 ball valves on this contraption. Um, you can see that one. I'm gonna open that up. 
I am going to close my outlet on the tank and as you can see on the on the uh, on the outlet side right here it goes up comes up through and these are the only two basically these are the only two places uh, that the outlet of the pump can go I've got this hooked up to a, a switch I want to make sure this is this is currently not the way that I want it to go I want it to go into the vessel uh, I left it this way after I drained the vessel the last time that's why it was like that so I always suggest when you're doing this to double check all of your valves on the pump that you're you're gonna use because believe me I have <laughs> certainly made some mistakes pushing product so I've got the tank outlet closed or the processor outlet closed I've got the inlet from the primary tank open I've got the primary tank itself open no other valves are open so if I flip this switch product should come out of the vessel into the processor you can watch the level on the tank you can see it go down so that's about the rate I you know I haven't really uh, measured it for the time so I'm on the shut my pump off close my valves and basically that is that is loading the machine so I've got 24 gallon I need to do some uh, some calculations on that how many gallon of methanol I need we usually use about 20 percent so I would I would assume that you know we're going to be somewhere around five gallon give or take a quarter or so so that's that's it